Well, folks, it's cold today. Lexington right now is having one of the worst ice storms in recent memory. This is uh, my shed right now. I actually had to break the ice off of this lock this morning. This is my car, the trusty Prius, completely iced over. And the worst part is, ugh, I cannot get that open at all. And the worst part is here in Kentucky, a state that normally is pretty temperate, it's not supposed to get above 30 for the next like week. So I don't know how long I'm gonna be stuck here. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my shipping time on eBay just in case. The reason that I'm telling you guys all of this is that I don't know the next time I'm really gonna be able to go sourcing either. So I'm asking myself, okay, what are some good indoor videos that I could possibly make that might be interesting for folks? And as luck would have it, just yesterday delivered right to my doorstep are two large boxes of really cool and interesting video game items that I bought from a follower on Instagram that I'm gonna be opening up for you guys today. And I think you're gonna really enjoy what's inside because there are some super unique items. Then depending on how long that takes afterwards, I may give you guys an update on sort of rebuilding my Switch collection. And then after that, if we still have time, we'll do some video game eBay what's sold. So I'm gonna start with the big box here, although I will give you guys a little peek of the smaller box because there's a lot of gold in here. Check this out. Ooh, a whole bunch of super valuable uh, Game Boy and GBA titles. I'm really excited to actually get a good look at the condition of those because I have not actually fully examined them. But here is the first nice big bit of this collection. I guess we'll start out with the controllers. We've got a regular old GameCube controller with a really solid stick. So this is maybe 30 bucks or so. This was an interesting one. I can't remember how much I actually offered on this. By the way, the deal as a whole, I didn't get permission to share any of the uh, financial or personal information about it, but to the Instagram follower who did reach out with this deal, thank you very much. Um, this right here is the controller for the Pokemon Pikachu Edition Nintendo 64. Uh, the stick on it is okay, not the best I've ever felt, and the biggest issue is up here. Uh, the button is missing. I'm not sure if this is something that I uh, could repair myself. I probably could. But anyway, even for parts, this does have some value. Then right here, we've got a limited Platinum Edition uh, Game Boy Advance box. I think the Game Boy Advance may be somewhere else in here. Surprisingly enough, I don't think these are worth a ton on their own, even uh, with the box. I don't think the box adds all that much value, if I'm not mistaken. I think they may be fairly common, maybe 10 or possibly 20 bucks on that. So, uh, you know, a nice little throw in. Aha, uh -huh, yep, here it is. The Platinum Edition Game Boy Advance with the uh, cover and everything. Let's see, there are batteries in there. Let's see if it turns on for us here. Love that sound. We've got the nice little Game Boy Advance case here. Let's see if there's anything in the front pouch. Nope, nothing there. Then I guess we can get to the cartridge part of this deal. We've got a Super Mario All-Stars on the SNES. All of these uh, are going to be SNES games here. A uh, couple copies looks like of Super Mario World. All of these are in uh, decent condition. They need to be cleaned for sure. Uh, Mortal Kombat 2, which I found out recently is worth more than Mortal Kombat 1, so that's nice. We've got Super Punch Out as well as Street Fighter 2. All right, so now we're coming down to what I would say is definitely the best part of this box. First of all, we have uh, some individual PlayStation 2 and GameCube titles. All of these are worth at least something. I'm not sure I'll know the dollar value off the top of my head for most of them. Inuyasha, The Secret of the Cursed Mask on PlayStation 2. That one is incomplete, unfortunately. This was a surprisingly valuable game. Monster Rancher 4 on the PS2. Nice and complete, so that is great to see. Wow, yeah, on Amazon, the lowest listed copy of this is 150 bucks or 123 after fees. So uh, this is an excellent game to look out for and really nice to have in such great shape. I'll have to check eBay and see if it's going for something similar on there as well. Then we've got Dark Cloud 2, complete with the manual. We've got Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures, new for 2004. Also nice and minty fresh. We've got Mario Kart Double Dash, looks good. And last but not least, 
Shaman King. Shonen Jumps Shaman King. Uh, for a second there, I thought it was sealed, but it actually has been opened there. And we've got the manual with that guy as well. In hindsight, I'm not really sure why I requested this game in this deal because there were like some larger pictures of like everything that was available. Uh, I requested this game specifically, but I don't know why because it's not really worth anything. So that's a bit of an oopsies there. Let's cue that Roblox oof sound effect that I like so much. Ooh, 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 ooh. Then we've got a whole bunch of N64 cartridges in here also, and most of them I believe are worth at least something. We've got uh, Yoshi's Story here. We've got Mario Kart 64, some of the classics. Tony Hawk Pro Skater. This is a really good one. Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask on the 64. Uh, I believe this is a 50 plus, maybe even more dollar title. So that's awesome to see. Uh, Army Men Sarge's Heroes, I don't think is worth much. Batman Beyond, I don't really know the value on that game. Uh, Super Smash Bros is around, I'd say maybe 40 or 50. That's usually kind of where it hovers. Really solid 64 collection here. We've got Wave Race 64. That was one that I had as a kid. Never really liked it that much. Uh, Diddy Kong Racing. We've got Excite Bike 64. WCW versus NWO. Another copy of Super Smash Bros. that does look like a repo. Yeah, that's definitely a repo cart, unfortunately. There's a little bit more gloss and the colors are a little bit more saturated than you would normally see. Just when you look at enough of these carts, you can kind of tell. Also, the plastic just kind of seems, feels newer. Um, so yeah, kind of an unfortunate. We've got two copies of Zelda Ocarina of Time, but fortunately it does look like both of these are actually authentic. We've got NASCAR 99. And then the real gem, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Well, this one and Majora's Mask are both highly valuable games. I think my last one of this sold in the like 120 range, so that's great to find, as well as Mario Party 2. We've also got a solitary PS1 game, Twisted Metal 3. And then last, but certainly not least, we have this large bag of Game Boy Advance. In reality, I think it's a lot uh, kind of a mixed Game Boy bag. Yes, it is. And I believe some of these are actually the actual physical games that go with some of the boxes that we have in the other box. So let's just go through these really quick. I can't really tilt it up very well, but we've got Home Alone 2. We've got not one, but two copies of Pokemon Crystal version. Those are probably going to be the most valuable titles in here at around 70 or so a piece without the box. Um, we've got Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. Uh, fire, or not fire red, but rather original red version, uh, original blue version. This one seems like really nice plastic, so either this is in excellent shape or maybe it's a repo. This honestly looks pretty legit to me just comparing it with this older fire red, so I'm gonna say that that one is uh, actually authentic. We've got a few GBA titles here as well. Star Wars, not worth much. Jackie Chan Adventures, who remembers that show on uh, Disney Channel? No, not Disney Channel. We've got Jackie Chan Adventures Legend of the Dark Hand. I may actually have to look that one up. I don't remember ever coming across it. I wouldn't guess it's very valuable. Dragon Ball Z, The Legacy of Goku. That's one that I will have to look up as well. Dragon Ball Z are always good ones to look out for. Uh, and then Spyro 2 Season of Flame. I don't think this is worth much either. Definitely the best GBA title in this lot is Pokemon Sapphire. And then we've got a good amount of Game Boy and Game Boy Color games here that I'll just go through quickly. We've got Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages, Pokemon Silver, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Duel Stories. Can't remember coming across that one before. Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, I did have this one as a kid, played it on the Game Boy Color. Kiwi, that was my Game Boy, my Game Boy's color. Uh, let me know in the comments what color Game Boy Color you first had, if any. Uh, Tetris. Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Seasons. What was the other one that we had? Oracle of Ages, interesting. Uh, Army Men, as well as Toy Story on the Game Boy. So that is all the games in the large box. Now let's check out the boxes, which may be the most interesting part of this whole haul. So these right here are the game boxes that came with this deal. I'm really excited to open these because I don't come across too many of these these days. Um, and before I get into it, I know what you're all thinking. Oh, Caleb, why, why did you order them like that? Little crushed boxes, bleh. I know, I get it. These things do lose value when they're crunched. Uh, I did request that these 
things be sent like in a box in box method with more packing material and stuff. Doesn't look like it ended up happening, uh, but the good news is it does appear that most of them are in similar condition to the photos at least. So that gives me a little bit of comfort, even though it is hard to see these bent, uh, you know, in any fashion. Let's go ahead and start with the N64 ones. The one that I was excited to see, but also really bummed about the uh, condition in the original photos was this Conker's Bad Fur Day down here. So yeah, you can tell this one's just been chewed up something real bad. Uh, it's got like missing cardboard down here. Luckily it does have the manual in it. So that at least, even though it does have some wear and stuff, like that'll go for something. I don't know how much, if anything, this box is really going to go for. I don't know if any collector wants that in their collection, although this is a really pretty highly sought after game. So even in this condition, it may bring something at least. This one, at least on the front, is much nicer looking, the Super Smash Bros. This one may actually end up staying with me just because uh, this is a very nostalgic game for me. It got me into the Smash Bros series, and I believe was the first game ever that I was able to beat my dad at. Uh, through many hours of practicing on my own. Looks like it does have a manual in here as well. The biggest downfall of this box is the back here. It just has that nice big rip in it. So, uh, but that's not the kind of thing that you're really going to notice when it's sitting on a shelf. So I'm not gonna cry myself to sleep over that. The only other N64 box we have in here also has a nice big sticker on the front there. Looks like it was sold for $20 at one point. Batman Beyond. Uh, definitely some rinks and wrinkles and, uh, you know, crinkles in this box, but it feels like it has the manual as well. Yes, it does. All things considered, this is probably the best N64 box, so not sure honestly what the value is on that. I don't think that's a super valuable game. But then we have what I'm sure many people have been waiting for ever since I flashed this earlier on, the Pokemon and Game Boy game boxes. So right here out of the gate, we have a fairly nice, I mean, not nice, but like fairly decent condition, uh, yellow version special Pikachu edition Game Boy box. Do not see a manual in there, unfortunately, and I don't, I don't remember even getting a Pokemon uh, yellow game in here, so this might be box only, but either way, that's an absolute classic. I'm sure it will bring some money, or maybe I'll end up keeping one of them too, because that is one that I played as a kid. Then we've got Super Mario Bros. Deluxe as well. We do have the game for that, uh, and it looks like it does actually have the insert and the... Uh, manuals and everything that come with it. So that's really nice to see. It does also have some uh, bending on the side here, but it seems like the other sides are in pretty good shape. I really like the art on that too. That's kind of fun. Up next, we have a not great condition, Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons box. Uh, I'm sure if I fiddled with it enough, I could get it to close and everything, but we've got some pretty serious bending on this side, especially and a little bit on this one, but it does appear that we may, yet we do have a manual in there. Hard to see it in this condition, honestly, but you know, as a kid, you're not thinking that these things are ever going to be like worth something to collectors or to yourself. Uh, so, you know, you gotta kind of have empathy for the five-year-old that probably sat on these at one time. Um, you've got Pokemon Blue version. This is another one. I don't think on a lot of these Pokemon games I've ever like, held an original box for them. So this is a really cool experience for me, honestly. Uh, and this one's not in bad shape. I think it does have a manual in there as well. Yes, it does. Although it doesn't have, yeah, it looks like no insert. And is this an actual manual? It says Pokemon Trainer's Guide. Uh, yeah, it looks like it does at least correspond to uh, this one. Is this what the original manual looked like? You guys can let me know in the comments. Uh, Kind of a bummer not to have an insert in there, but you know, something is always better than nothing. Here's what the back looks like on that. I don't know what it is about the old art with like more of the gradients and uh, some of like, almost looks like texturing on them. It really, it looks like watercolor. Like are these original animations, were they done in watercolor? Does anyone know the history on that? I really like them, super nostalgic for me. Uh, we're gonna move on here. Looks like we've got another Pokemon yellow version. Uh, does look pretty crushed, although the 
Looks like maybe on these versions, or at least on this version, uh, there wasn't an actual insert, but rather just some like cardboard pieces glued in there that would keep the game there. Looks like we're missing a flap right here, uh, and this flap is definitely bent a little bit. But other than that, I mean, the box itself, because it was bent in like this, there isn't as much bending on the sides, which is kind of nice to see. Uh, so, oh, I mean, overall, not terrible condition on that box. This one's awesome too, check this out. Pokemon Silver version, uh, just like the nice shiny case there with Lugia on the front. Uh, and we do have the Silver version trainer's guide manual as well. The flaps are pretty busted up on this guy. Sides are definitely dinged, but you know, really cool to be able to see and hold that box nonetheless. This is just, this is a ton of fun to go through folks if you can't tell. This box might be the nicest condition that we've seen so far. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX on the Game Boy Color. Really just a slight bend on this outside edge there. Let's see, I believe I feel some manuals or something inside here. Yes, indeed, we've got the original manual as well, and that was uh, one game that we did have over there, so I'll be able to sell this as complete. And by the way, folks, I should mention that uh, all of these boxes and the corresponding games will eventually be available on my eBay store if they don't sell to someone in the Discord first. Uh, and that will be linked in the description. If you do like something, definitely reach out to me on Instagram, shoot me a DM, and I'll be able to give you a discount off of what I have it for on eBay. Up next, we've got Spyro 2 Season of Flame. I wouldn't guess that this is a super valuable game, even complete in box, although unfortunately this is also one of the nicer boxes that we have. Um, looks like it does have the manual and everything there, but you know, it can't hurt to, but obviously it's not gonna hurt the value at all to have the original box, and it's just kind of cool to look at and enjoy a little bit of the art associated with it. The other GBA one we have in here is the Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones. Uh, I know for a fact that this even in box is not worth all that much, but nonetheless, there it is. Oh, folks, this one really gets me. Pokemon Crystal version. This may be one that I have to keep as well now that I'm looking at it. This was the first Pokemon game that I ever played. Got it with my Kiwi Game Boy Color, and uh, for like the first two weeks or something crazy of having it, I could not figure out how to get out of the house. The only indicator you have on there is like a little mat that's next to the door and everywhere else the walls are just solid. So I'm like, you know, walking around, talking to mom, like going to the sink thinking this game absolutely sucks. Until one day I'm sitting at my sister's ballet lesson and this kid next to me sees me struggling and he, he's eating like a Big Mac or something, takes his greasy fingers, grabs the Game Boy from me and gets me out of the house and just like, my eyes were open and ever since that day, you know, the rest is history. So, uh, man, I may have to keep this one to display on the shelf. This one's super cool. Pretty decent condition box here. Uh, and also we do have the manual as well as the uh, little Nintendo Power insert here with Suicune on the front. Uh, gosh, I just love these old animations. Does it, does it do it for anyone else uh, like it does for me? And look at this, they've even got the heads of the trainers on the flaps of the game box here. That's a really nice little touch. Wow, if there was ever any doubt that Caleb is the biggest geek on the block, this video will put that doubt to rest. All right, so here we have Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. Unfortunately, the bottom is kind of busted out on this. That's probably the biggest condition issue. Uh, no inserts or anything inside. Uh, but we do have the manual as well to go with it. And then finally, last but not least, this one really hits me too, is Pokemon Ruby version. That <laughs> is just super nice. Good condition on this one too. This may actually be the best condition box. Uh, this was the second, well, I don't know if it was the second game I played, but I have a very distinct memory of going with my grandma to Walmart uh, I think I actually bought, uh, not Ruby, but Sapphire version, along with a Game Boy Advance SP. And oh man, that entire like month, I was a happy camper. Getting that backlit screen for the first time was just absolutely amazing. Brand new Pokemon game, oh, does not get any better than that. And also doesn't get any better than uh, also finding the manuals and inserts with your original box. Looks like we've got uh, the little Game Boy Advance insert there as well as the original manual. 
And folks, that's pretty much going to do it for the uh, mail unboxing today. You can see we've got a really good smattering of original Game Boy boxes, which just is not something that you get to see or handle every day. So I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did, but right now let's hop on over to the new Switch shelf. Well, the temporary Switch shelf, and I'll give you guys an update on that. All right, so a couple updates before we hit the switches. One, I have decided officially that I am going to keep these three boxes, Ruby version, Crystal version, gotta love it, uh, and also the Smash Bros box. Second update is that this box, apparently box only, goes for in the neighborhood of 200 bucks. I mean, maybe a little bit less for this one, but still, that's kind of wild for a Game Boy box. And then the last update, as I was looking inside this game, this Pokemon Yellow version, I look into the little cartridge slot down here and see this little piece of paper. I was like, what is that? As it turns out, look at this. Blastoise and Charizard. It looks like somebody, some kid at one point, cut out from a magazine pictures of Charizard and Blastoise Pokemon cards and stuck them in this box for me to find. I just, I don't know. I love the thought of that. Thought it was super cute and uh, wanted to share it with you guys. So as many of you guys know, uh, recently I have been using insurance money to slowly rebuild my Nintendo Switch console collection. And just this week, a few of those initial purchases have arrived in the mail. So I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that I am getting in and also just give some thoughts on like condition and any variation that may exist. The only ones that really remain from the original collection are uh, these ones right here. Uh, these two are just boxes because they had uh, the switches that Erica and I use personally. Luckily, this one uh, was not touched, the Dragon Quest Edition Switch right here. Then also the uh, Animal Crossing one is here as well. Uh, I did get a replacement regular gray Switch Lite, pretty standard, nothing much to say about that. And then these here are the special edition systems that I have been able to repurchase so far with insurance funds. Starting over here with the Fortnite edition Switch, this one was brand new, so really no condition issues to report with that, except that I will be uh, selling the Fortnite code that comes in it just to, I don't know, recoup some of the funds. I don't plan on ever actually playing the game, so that one will end up getting sold on eBay. I wanna say they're going for like 150 bucks. And I was planning on selling the code from my original one as well. Then we've got the uh, Mario Kart bundle switch box. There's nothing actually different about this console and it hasn't gone up in value a ton from the original retail value since it came out pretty recently. Uh, then over here we have the Mario Odyssey switch. I'm definitely happy to get this one back because Mario Odyssey is one of my favorite games. The only, there are two upsetting things about this deal. One of them is that on the bottom here there is a uh, rip in the box kind of small, hard to see, but uh, not the kind of thing that I'll really notice ordinarily. But the other unfortunate thing is that the uh, actual inserts of the box are gone. So it's just kind of all like jumbled in here loose. Unfortunately, the eBay listing for that didn't have it uh, opened up so that I could actually see it. And there were so few listings available. I just kind of had to take what I could get. The unfortunate thing is you can see that this box size, because it came with this case as well originally, it's actually thicker than the regular Switch box, which makes it difficult to find the right kind of inserts. Otherwise, I just would have ordered more for, you know, 10 bucks or whatever. So that's one thing that I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for. It's not the kind of thing that I'm gonna notice throughout the day, but it just feels good to have things like really nice and complete. Definitely drop a like if you feel the same. Then down here we have the iconic Smash Bros Ultimate Switch. The one that I originally had of this, I got a smoking deal on from, that somebody in the Discord had sent me because he knew that I was collecting them. Uh, ended up being able to pick it up for $300, which is crazy. This one of course ended up costing much more than that, but it does have all of the original inserts and everything. I will uh, open it up here for you guys. There's a little bit of wear and damage to this one, but 
but you know, that's the kind of thing I can live with. I do have to say the Smash Bros. one has probably got to be my favorite box of all. I just love how colorful and dynamic it is. Uh, and then last but not least, we do have a replacement Pokemon Edition Switch Lite. This one also uh, is in the original plastic wrap and everything in there. It has been used, I believe, but it was used very lightly, taken care of very well, and obviously you can see that this box is pretty much immaculate. Also, if anyone is concerned that this is what the Switch shelf is going to look like from now on, fear not, I have much better plans for the Switch console collection. It's just going to take a little bit because I'm waiting on some other elements of the uh, office rejuvenation project that you guys know I've been working on for a while to complete the actual shelving for all those systems. We just gotta be a little patient, take it one step at a time here, folks. This is definitely a process that cannot be done overnight. So one comment that I get fairly frequently on this channel is, Caleb, we see you do all of these really like big pickups and like where you're buying stuff, but like we don't really have a good idea of what is actually selling for you. Could you do more what sold videos? Uh, and I kind of understand that, but I kind of don't because personally, I feel like what sold videos are kind of boring. I don't know, I feel like sourcing videos are a lot more fun, but nonetheless, it's my job to provide and create videos that you guys like to watch, not that I necessarily like to make. So in honor of that, I have 20 uh, video game related items that have sold on eBay in the last couple weeks, all of which I have gotten in pickups that have been filmed. Most of them are NES and SNES games that I got in that really big lot and have been listing on eBay in the last couple weeks because a lot of those uh, more retro, more collectible titles are the ones that are gonna go on eBay rather than Amazon. And I feel like showing eBay sold is just a little bit more interesting because they have like the pictures and the actual numbers and all that. So anyway, without further ado, here are 21 items that have sold on eBay that I have picked up in videos in the last two weeks. The first one is a lot of nine sealed Rocket Arena games. PS4 and Xbox One. This sold almost certainly to like a video game store. They were all sealed. I picked them up for three cents a piece at Walmart retail arbitrage. The craziest thing is when I posted a video that mentioned that on TikTok, people were like, some people were like, after shipping and fees, you're never gonna make money because like this game is free or super cheap online or you know, whatever. I was like, these things were three cents a piece. Like they were basically free. How can I not make money? So anyway, they sold for $26 plus shipping and I had basically $0 into them. So uh, that was nice to see. One of the best NES uh, sales that I got actually happened very quickly. Like the night that I listed it, Power Blade sold for $77 free shipping. Mega Man 6 sold for $38 and pretty much all of these will be free shipping. I always put free shipping on uh, stuff that can ship first class because I know basically how much it's going to sell for and I just price that in when I'm actually pricing my item. Dragon Warrior 2 sold for 53 bucks or technically 52.97. I always like to uh, end my numbers in a seven because just in terms of consumer psychology, people tend to respond well to that number. It's the same reason that like Walmart and some retailers do it. Um, then next I sold Sonic and Knuckles 1994 complete in box uh, on the Sega Genesis. This is one of the pickups that I got in a Switch Lite trade, and this ended up selling for $80 shipped. So uh, that was definitely the best Genesis title in that bunch. Final Fantasy 1 on the NES sold for 23. Sesame Street Countdown, believe it or not, sold for $15 and sold fairly quickly. So uh, I guess be on the lookout for that one. Maybe like if you can pick it up for a few bucks or like one or two bucks at a video game conference or something. I don't know where you'd find that, but it sold for 15 bucks. Clue Clue Land sold for $40. I did have best offer on on uh, all of my NES titles. I got a bunch of offers on this one right in the first couple days, but I was like, no, nah, I'll just leave it. And it ended up selling for a full price of $40. The Flintstones, this is an NES title that I got a long time ago, actually. Um, had it listed for a long time at like $74. Just did not uh, get any bites. Ended up getting an offer for $45. Uh, just this last week, I countered with 56 and it ended up selling. So I definitely am willing to take less than I originally wanted on items if they sit for a while. Kid Nikki Radical Ninja on the NES sold for uh, $13 shipped. Micro Machines 
sold for 35. Dragon Warrior 4 was my best NES sale in the last couple weeks. One of my best ever, at least for a loose cartridge, uh, sold for $147. Contra on the NES sold for $29. Castellian, also NES, sold for uh, $17.50. I don't know why I priced that one at the, you know, 50 cents mark rather than, not, I don't know. Uh, the Adams Family, another one that for some reason I had a ton of offers on, uh, but I just held firm and it ended up selling for full price at $19. Then getting into some of the SNES games, Separation Anxiety sold for, it's, it's worth a little bit less than I originally thought, honestly. Uh, $16 did have a little bit of wear on the top of the label. Shadow Run was a really solid uh, SNES sale at 60 bucks. Spawn sold for 15. Spider-Man Venom Maximum Carnage sold for 42. A viewer actually, so thank you very much, Jonathan. He said that it was his first eBay purchase ever, so definitely appreciate that one. Super Mario Kart sold for 37. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Pool of Radiance sold for uh, 55. And that is it for our What's Solds. I did have a couple more sell today that I'm gonna have to try to ship out tomorrow if I can actually get out of this ice storm. If you found this video entertaining today, folks, or if you're just in a kind or generous mood, definitely hit that subscribe and the like button on the video. And until next time, I will catch you guys. <laughs> Almost let that one go on the flip.